I, I think that we have quite a number of things that we still have to get done. So we have a number of partners. And so the Barbados National Energy Plan and the IARP, which everyone is following, both government and the private sector, and certainly in the, in the months since I have been Minister with Responsibility for Energy, we have met with every single one of the stakeholders in industry to be able to assess, first of all, what they're already doing. But on the 6th of March, we will then begin the process of updating what our own national trajectory looks like. And so we've been working with a partner. We will have a kickoff on the 6th of March, and we'll talk a little bit about that at that time. But we will be going through sector by sector, industry by industry, to ensure that the transition is going to be on track. Where it is not on track, we need to be able to figure out what needs to be done to make it so. And then we're going to be overlaying what is the level of investment that is going to be necessary to support both households, governments, and of course the private government, and of course the private sector to make this work. So if I give you an example of the manufacturing sector, you have the manufacturing sector that has infrastructure. In some instances, you have a plant that may have been 30 years old and it may have been built to use diesel. We have to now work with those entities to facilitate the transition. LNG, potentially as a medium-term transition fuel, but then to cleaner forms of energy. There are, however, many companies in, in Barbados now that we have seen, like Goddard's Enterprises, that has an extensive PV penetration in terms of their solar farms and their roof installations. So that's something that is being seen across the industry. But then we have to look at what's happening in agriculture. We have to look at what's happening in the tourism sector. We have to look and see what's happening, of course, in transport, which is a sector that we're dealing with this morning. Transport consumes the largest percentage of our energy in country. And we have to be able to navigate what that looks like. And so I want to say that so far, I can see from the private sector's perspective, the commitment coming from them, but we will be working with them on a six month plan over the course of March, uh, ending up in the middle of the year, so we can ensure that the private sector and government remain fully on stream with a 2030 target. It's not an easy process, and certainly if we consider, I think I know that we're feeling as though COVID is such a distant memory, but we never must forget that many of these businesses went through COVID just a short time ago. Their balance sheets were faced with any number of difficulties, and so the transition in some instances would have taken a hit, certainly over the last two years. But we as a government are committed to working with our private sector partners to ensure that Barbados is able to make the transition. But this is the last thing that I would say, the transition must also be just. So in the same way that Deanne spoke about people making people's lives better, this has to also focus on ensuring that people are at the center of this transition. And globally, what we call that is the just transition, ensuring that new industries emerge out of old industries, new jobs emerge out of old jobs, retooling, re re upskilling, retraining, all of those things have to take place to ensure that Barbados is positioned for the energy future that we see for ourselves.